Kentucky, McDonald at the University of Arizona. We'll go straight to questions. Troy, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Ari. Troy, uh, Troy Hutchison, All Sports Tucson. Um, as you look back through not only this season, but your Arizona career, what are you going to remember most about this team and your teammates? What I remember most is just how strong they are. Um, you know, uh, no matter what situation you put it through adversity, I mean, myself, my teammates, we always fought the coaches. Um, man, just a, a good group of ladies that I played with. Uh, yeah. Um, and I'll remember most is this ride. I mean, we had a great run in NCAA tournament. Um, we accomplished a lot that many didn't think we could do. And, um, you know, it was tough, but um, I'm very proud of my teammates. Our next question comes from PJ Brown. PJ, go ahead. Hi, Ari. It's PJ from the Arizona Daily Star. Hope you can hear me. Um, what in that last second when you took that shot, can you walk us through what what was going on, what, what you saw? Um, I knew it was about 6.1 seconds left maybe. Um, I got denied hard. Um, I tried to turn the corner. They sent three at me. Um, I took a tough contested shot, but, I mean, it didn't fall. So that's what I remember. Our next question comes from Michelle Smith with the Pac-12.com. Michelle, go ahead. Eric, congratulations on a great run. Um, this game was back and forth. They would make a run, push out, get a little distance, and then you guys would push back. Where were you finding that? Where were you finding that energy to keep coming back every time it looked like they might they might really push away from you guys? Yeah, um, it started with Shayna and Bindu. Um, they came up big for a second half, pressuring the ball, getting key steals. Um, I mean, probably their best defensive efforts all season. Um, I'm really proud of them. Uh, Shayna gave us a lot of energy today. It's probably one of her best games, and um, she kind of she had us afloat in the second half. Our next question comes from Danny Thompson. Danny, go ahead. Ari, Danny Thompson with the three point conversion, outstanding game, and outstanding season. As you look back on this entire season, what is the one? What are some of the things you learned about yourself? and learned about your teammates in a year that was not normal compared to most circumstance type years? What I learned about myself and my teammates is that, you know, um, we have thick skin. We're very – we have mental toughness. And you, you sh it showed, like, throughout this tournament. Um, before we got here from the start, Coach Barnes says the two teams that play for the championship, those are the teams that, that, that are mentally tough. And I think we showed that. Um, I think that, you know, we showed that we had a lot of growth over these last couple of years, just Coach Barnes bringing in the, player, the players that are willing to work, um, that are competitive, and, um, you know, that helped our culture change tremendously. So, I mean, I'm just really proud of these ladies, and I'm th very thankful for them and the coaches. Our next question comes from Ariel Chambers. Ariel, go ahead. Hi, it's Ariel Chambers from Highlight Her. Um, first of all, so proud of you, Ari. Um, but many want – want to know how you did it, but I want to know what you did it for or who you did it for. Yeah, um, every time I step on, uh, put on my shoes and step on the court, um, I do it for my grandfather. Um, I know that, you know, despite the outcome of today, he'll be really proud. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do it for. And just for my, my parents, uh, the rest of my family, um, the sacrifices, you know. Um, so when I lace my shoes up, I just go hard for them. Our next question comes from Howard. Howard, go ahead. Harry, congratulations on a great season. I, I know it's still in the moment for you, but obviously you know the impact you have had on this Arizona program, uh, the way in which it will largely be defined by what you've done going forward. Um, what does that mean to you, and how do you plan to help reinforce the kind of culture you have helped to build here over your time? Um, you know, my time in Arizona means a lot to me, what I've accomplished, what my teammates accomplished, and just the legacy I want to leave uh, once I'm gone is that, um, you know, work hard, uh, don't listen to the naysayers, focus on your course. I mean, your journey is different from, you know, your peers. So just keep working on you, stay grounded, uh, stay humble, keep God first, and just, just continue to work hard, and you'll be successful.
Our next question comes from Haley. Haley, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Ari. Haley McGoldrick from Sportsnet. Through this whole journey, it's been you and Coach Barnes. You've done this together. You moved to Arizona with her. What does it mean for you to make history for this Arizona program with her trusting your leadership to lead this team and also for you to trust in her? It means a lot. Um, our relationship was built on trust, and um, we're both, we both value uh, being relational, and um, that means a lot, and you know, she's helped me grow. I think I've helped her grow in many ways as well. And um, I just, I, I'm just thankful for her. She gave me the key. She really trusted me uh, coming in. She told me what my role would be uh, on the team. And um, yeah, um, I'm just really thankful for her. Um, she's put me in great positions and she's helped contribute to my success. Our next question will come from Javier. Javier, go ahead. Uh, Javier Morales, All Sports Tucson. Um, Harry, uh, you know, you lost this game, but the mark you leave on this program going forward, what are your thoughts about how you, you know, what you left, the, your legacy with uh, Arizona? Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Javier. You, the, the game is lost today, but, the, the, you know, going forward, the, the mark you left on this program will pay dividends for Adia. What are your thoughts about that? Um, you know, um, I'm just really proud of my teammates. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. Although we didn't get the outcome, you know, we wanted. Um, I'm just I'm just proud of my teammates. And, I mean, this should motivate them coming in next year, this momentum. I'm um, just looking back on what we did and that the sky's the limit, and just to stay together. I mean, this is definitely, this will make them hungry. This will make me hungry um, in our basketball journeys. And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited, you know, for what we accomplished this year in just so little time, and, it's, and especially in this weird year. But I'm very thankful. Our next question will come from Kyle Ducker with The Athletic. Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, the, the theme sort of that it developed in this tournament and then going into this final four was sort of people not believing, people not talking about you, even to the exclusion of you all from that video in the final four. How, what level of pride is there as you exit, even with the loss, knowing that sort of everyone is talking about you individually, talking about your program, talking about your coach, that, that everybody's kind of will remember this Arizona team? Yeah, uh, we're walking out of here. We're leaving San Antonio with a lot of pride. We're going to walk out of here and leave with our heads up, um, just knowing how far we came, um, how far we've come up, uh, as a program and as individuals. I mean, we have nothing to hang our heads for. I mean, we competed. We battled. I mean, we just lost to a very great uh, team, uh, an experienced team with talented players in all positions, and they, they're they led by a, a, a pioneer to the game. And so, I mean – we just got to look back and we just got to, you know, just look at the positives and just look how far we've come. The next question will come from Carter Hill. Carter, go ahead. Hi, Carter Hill with fifth quarter. Congratulations on a great season. Uh, just kind of piggybacking off of an earlier one. You know, it looks like coach came up to you and kind of put her arm around you after that, you know, that last possession. What did she say to you in that moment? Just uh, to pick my head up, um, you know, um, and that she trusts me uh, to put the team on my back and um, ride or die. And um, just saying how proud she was of us and how far we came. Our next question will come from Paul. Paul, go ahead. Hi, Paul Cicala from KVOA News 4 Tucson. Congrats on, on a great career, Mary. Um, my question is, uh, you know, you talked about how close you are with your family, and we know that they were all there representing Fresno Strong. Um, what's it going to mean for you after all this time in the bubble, now being able to, to leave after this press conference and be able to give your family a big hug and embrace them? What type of emotions do you feel like you're going to have? Um, I'll probably cry. <laughs> um, you know, tears of uh, happiness, but also, you know, sad, um, you know, especially after this loss. But, um, yeah, the, I mean, although we lost, I mean, we still, you know, we still got work to do. We still got to keep working on our game. So, I mean, but it'd definitely be exciting to actually see my family and actually, like, hug them. 
We have time for two more questions. The next one comes from Andrea. Andrea, go ahead. Yeah, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Congrats on a great season, Ari. I'm just wondering, the way Stanford played you defensively tonight, was it much different from the first two times that you all played, or was it similar? I think it was similar. Um, you know, uh, having Anna Wilson on me, um, you know, them jumping at everything, uh, just making it kind of difficult for me. So, I mean, I'll pretty much say it was the same, uh, just more physical this time. Our final question for Ari will come from Christina. Christina, go ahead. Get the outcome that you wanted, but how will you use this moment to kind of motivate you for your next chapter? Just to keep working on my game, uh, sharpen my game some more, um, and just to keep my head up and just always remind myself the sky's the limit and um, just keep working hard and just making people alongside of you better. Ari, thanks for your time this evening. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Well, next here from head coach Adia Barnes. If you'd like to ask her a question, please use your raise hand function now. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation first before asking your question. Thanks for joining us this yeah. evening, Coach. Our first question will come from Lindsay with USA Today. Lindsay, go ahead. Hi, Adia. Hi. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Congrats on an incredible season and an amazing run. Um, you guys turned the you turned Stanford over so much, 21 times, but you could only turn that into 12 points. Do you think you were tight? Do you think you didn't take great shots, or what was going on? I think um, yeah, we definitely didn't convert on um, the turnovers. I think that we were just taking some quick shots. I think um, taking some four shots, but those shots had been falling prior to this game. So, um, you, you know, they just didn't fall today. You know, we shot 29% from the field and, and we were missing a lot around the rim, a lot of chippies, a lot of floaters, a lot of um, pull-ups and just taking um, shots off balance. And those are things we don't convert on. So we had to turn them over 21 times. We have to be able to convert. Um, but if you would have told me that we're going to lose by, you know, 20 rebounds, we're going to be down by 20 rebounds on the boards and, and shoot 28%, I would have told you we would have lost by 30. So um, against great teams like Stanford, we have to be a little bit better at the small things. It doesn't ever come down to the last shot. It comes out down to the missed free throws down the stretch. It comes down to the foul on the three-point shot. It comes down to getting the turnovers and not converting. So it's those things. It's never the last play. Um, but, you know, it, it obviously just stings pretty bad. Our next question comes from PJ Brown. PJ, unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Dale, this is TJ from the Arizona Daily Star. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. It's a little loud here. It's hard, so I might be screaming. But okay. um, I know this was a tough loss, but if you can take a moment and think about not just this tournament run, but your whole season and, and what this team has accomplished what does that mean to you and how special is this team um this team is so special i am so proud um you know we fought like we weren't the best team in the tournament um we no one thought we'd be here we believed in each other uh, we didn't play a great game but we battled we played our hearts out and we came within one possession um, it doesn't come down to, down to the last possession. It comes down to all the little things. And the margin of error is so slim in a championship game. And this is uncharted territory for the Wildcats. Our program hadn't been to the tournament in 15 years, 16 years. And we've never played in the championship game. So were we a little tight? Yeah. Um, were we not hitting shots? Yeah. Um, but I mean, we fought. We played great defense. I mean, we, we did some good things. But Stanford's such a good team with so much depth, um, so many weapons offensively. Um, they isolated us inside. They did some things that were really tough for us to guard. Um, and but I'm I'm not ashamed. Like we made it to the championship game. We had we came within a basket of winning a national championship. So I'm proud. Um, 
And you know, we can, it's, it's hard. It, it does hurt. Like my heart's broken, but I can't ask for anything more of this team. Um, to shoot 28% and come with them one shot and shoot 27% from the three and lose by one point. Um, we did some other things really well, so I'm proud. Um, no one thought we'd be playing a championship game, no one. So, um, you know, we did. they did everything I asked. It's just the shots didn't fall and the little things we weren't able to execute on. Our next question comes from Paul. Paul, go ahead. Hi, Adia. Paul Sikala from KVOA News 4 Tucson. Congratulations again for such an amazing year. Um, in the final play that you drew up, um, were there, we all, everybody knew it was going to go to Ari McDonald, but were there any other options explored um, at that point to, for her to dish it off or anything, or was it all Ari or nothing? No, it was going to be Ari or nothing, just because if you look at the game, um, really Ari was the one scoring. Um, so, you know, as my decision as a coach is, I, and I knew she was going to be doubled, um, but, you know, running a, a screen to screener type action um, was the best option. But it wasn't like in this game we, we were hitting from the three, so there's an option for a three-pointer in that um, situation, but we needed, we needed a two. And so we knew she would catch it on the three-point line, um, and that's what happened. But they did a really good job of denying us after the screen and we they forced us to catch the ball really high and then when Ari went to drive we know she can go downhill because there's plenty of time we, we work on that a lot in practice the special situations and but she was pretty much triple teamed and she couldn't go downhill but I mean at that point you know we've been on Ari's back for the whole tournament so like she's got to take that shot and um, you know unfortunately it still had a chance of going in but I she's I have to put the ball in her hands um, in that situation because she's one of the reasons why we're here. Our next question comes from Nancy Armour with USA Today. Unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Adia. I hope you can hear me. Um, you mentioned about how proud you are of your team. Nobody expected you to get here. What is this going to do for you going forward? You know, you're, you've upped the bar so much. What, what kind of dividends is this going to pay off in the coming years? Um, it's hard to even have sight of that right now just because, like, I'm in the moment, I'm just a little bit <laughs> devastated. Um, but, I mean, for our players, they've set the foundation. Um, they are the reason why we're here. And, you know, we didn't get to do this last year, so Dominique, Amari, TT, all those players from last year, we didn't get to go to the tournament. So we're fortunate and blessed to be playing. Um, this team with Ari and with Shayna and with Bendu, Sam, Kate, Lauren, Helena, um, Trinity, everybody, the whole team from one to 14, we fought to get here. So the bar is high, the standard is high once you come this far. So once you've had success like this, you, um, you reach for the sky. And so you fight a little bit more. And um, you know, we have some players, some key players returning next year. And now this is going to be where you want to go. Um, this is going to be what we're trying to do. So proud um, because they've done this. They got us here. And now going to the tournament, like we before the goal was going to the tournament um, or winning a Pac-12 championship. Now we played for the national championship, which not a lot of teams can say they've done that. Not a lot of teams have gone this far. There's two. And the reality is with this season, one person is going to walk away happy with the season and their national champions, and everybody else is going to walk away um, disappointed. And we're, um, we got this close, so definitely disappointed. And I wanted to hoist the trophy and uh, make history, and it would have been almost next to a miracle for us to do that. But, um, you know, we had an opportunity to do that. And um, that's all I could ask for. And so the bar is high. Um, we want to come back here. I'm trying to build a program like Tara has, build a program like Gino and Don and all the other, um, you know, trailblazers in this profession. So I don't want to, I'm not sad of just being here, being in the tournament. I want this to be, I want to build a program where we're su you're surprised when they don't win. Like when you look at Tara or Gino or Don, it's a surprise if they don't win a championship. It's a disappointment. It's a, you know, it's a tough season that happens. So I don't want to just come here once and be done. I, I want to be back here. And I think that, in the future, Arizona will be back. Our next question comes from Jillian. Jillian, go ahead. Hi, 
Hi, Coach Jillian Brass from New York Times. Um, this is a very tight game. What do you think it says about the Pac-12 conference, and what does it mean for two Pac-12 teams to have had this close of a game on a national stage? It means that the Pac-12 is the best conference in the country, and it, it was evident right now. Um, two very good teams competing at the, on the biggest stage for women's basketball. But we've always said it's the best conference. I know Tara's been saying this a long time. So I think that it's time for people to respect the Pac-12 more, um, start paying attention, um, know who our players are, start watching us. I know on the East Coast when we play at 7 or 8 at night, it's really late. But to start, um, start paying attention, we have some of the best players in the country. We play some of the best basketball. And it's, it's a dominant conference. Um, and to, to have the winner of the Pac-12, you know, be the champion, um, national champion, it's pretty amazing. We finished second, and we finished second nationally right now. So I think it says a lot about our conference, and we continue just to, to have success in the tournament year in and year out. Our next question comes from Kim Doss. Kim, go ahead. This is Kim from Arizona Desert Swarm, Medea. Um, Shana, how, how much she raised her game today and the entire tournament and what it says about next year when Ari's gone and you need her more. For sure. Um, you know, Shana had her best game of the year. She came, she came in today, gave us a spark, and played her heart out defensively, offensively. Um, just she did uh, seven rebounds. I mean, three steals. Shayna was phenomenal. Without Shayna playing the way she did, we wouldn't have even came down to last possession. So um, you know, Ari passing the baton to to Shayna. Um, you know, Shayna's returning. So you know, we'll have some some good players returning. Lauren's a freshman. Um, Kate's returning. Bindu's returning. So so Ari Ari's not going to be here, and um, possibly Trinity, Trinity and Sam. But we have a good nucleus, and they have this experience, and they've had a taste of this success. So now they can be the leaders um, next year for everybody else and show what the standard is and what it takes to get here. It takes a little bit more. It takes um, another level in the preseason, offseason, to be able to win championships. And we're not quite there yet, but we're going to be there. Um, and, you know, so I'm very proud of Shane and the way she played. Everybody, Ben do. Um, Sam wasn't her best night offensively, but she played great defense. We just needed a little bit more from a couple more people to be able to win this game. Our next question comes from Andrea. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Andrea Adelson Hi. with ESPN.com. I'm wondering what Stanford did early on with Ari to maybe get her a little bit off her rhythm, but then what it said about her uh, to find that rhythm late in the game and give you a chance to win. Well, if you look at the game the whole time, I think they forced her to take, they, they were allowing tough threes. Uh, they didn't ever give her space. Um, she was just maneuvering and finding ways, ways to go downhill, but a lot of bodies in the paint. So every time she went downhill, there was posts in the paint or weak side help. Um, and we kind of expected that. We knew that. We knew that we had to be really good in transition. We knew that we'd have to turn them over and score, but we weren't able to turn them over and convert. So playing in the quarter court against Stanford is not an advantage for Arizona. Going downhill, playing fast in transition, um, our defense creating our offense is an advantage for Arizona. And we were just weren't able to convert on some of those things. So very hard, very hard when we're in the half court because then a lot of attention's on Ari and a lot of people, I think they forced her into tough shots. The reality is... The last couple of games, she was making those tough shots. Um, we took a lot of quick shots that were hard, took a lot of off-balance shots, um, but they just didn't fall. Uh, very hard to shoot 29%, 27% from the three and win a national championship game. We had to have some more shots fall, and that's all. Sorry, that's my baby in the background. Our next question will come from Troy. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, idea, Troy Hutchison, All, Spar uh, All Sports Tucson. Uh, this is going to be a two-part question. Okay. Um, first, what will you remember about this team? And secondly, does this run cement Aries' legacy as the best player in program history? Yeah, for sure. So Ari, um, hands down, no doubt, is the best player in Arizona's history. Um, she was a lot better than I ever was. <laughs> so, and the fact that I held those records for so long, it doesn't mean a lot because that means we weren't that good for a long time. So Ari just shattered everything. A better player than I could have ever been. Um, led us to the national championship game when no one would have thought that. So 
Ari was phenomenal, definitely the best player in Arizona history. And I'm proud that I coached her. I'm proud she chose me twice. I'm proud she came to Arizona to do something special when we weren't good. Um, we were probably 300 something in RPI. And for her to come here and then come back when she could have gone pro and then to lead us to national championship and be one shot away from winning it all, I mean, she's amazing. Um, what was your other question? Hold on, let me get back to I it. forgot, Hold sorry. On quick second. Let's go to Jay and then we'll come back. Okay, sorry, I forgot the second part. Jay, go I ahead. Hi, idea, Jay Gonzalez, Fox Sports 1450. Um, there were three or four times in the game that it looked like Stanford was going to get away from you. They went up by nine. I think one time they were up by 11. What What did you feel you had to do at that point? What did you say to your team well, we just, to not let it get away from you? It had to make a couple of defensive adjustments. Um, we were getting lost a couple of times on some specific scout, specific actions that when we didn't execute it, they, they scored. Um, so it just had to be a little bit better with some actions. Um, and then I think that we did that. And then we definitely put a little bit more pressure um, tried to help from some different areas, which it's usually very hard. I mean, Stanford usually does not shoot, uh, you know, four for 14, 29% from the three. So I think we forced them into to taking some, um, you know, contested shots. But I think we guarded some things really well. But, um, yeah, just kind of some miscommunication on a couple of things, but it's not really what we do. So a little bit of mental lapse on some things. But, I mean, nothing's perfect. It doesn't come down to the last thing. It comes down to when I look at why we lost the game, um, second chance points, um, you know, not turning them over, not not converting on the turnovers, and just the, making free throws. So that's the difference in the game. Down the stretch, we missed some key free throws. So um, we would have done those things, we would have won, even shooting 28% and um, six for 22 from the three. So we had a chance because we played some very good defense today. Okay, we have Troy back to the other okay, part of that. Sorry, question. sorry, Troy. No problem. So what will you remember most about this team and this season? Just the way that we fought, the way that we um, just approached things, the way they looked at me in my eyes and believed in the things I said and spoke my language and played their hearts out. I think when you're a coach and your team plays their hearts out for you, there's a good connection. I think if you look around the country, there's a lot of teams that don't play hard for their coaches that don't listen. They will run through a wall for me. And they did that. And they fought. And they played their hearts out. They retired a little bit. But they just found a way to get back in the game. So as a coach, I'm, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Um, this was a hard year. Um, it was a hard year. It was a COVID year. It was a year we didn't get team bonding a lot. We were on lockdown in hotels most of the year. You know, we've been here three weeks, pretty much on lockdown. It is hard mentally for players, but they stuck together. They fought. They were resilient. They handled adversity, and they didn't complain. They didn't, um, you know, second-guess things. You know, we uh, we do a lot. Of, we ask of a lot. I ask of a lot for them um, off the court, on the court. We do a lot at Arizona, whether it's community service, a little less this year because of COVID, but tons of skill work. Um, a lot of little things, and they did it, and they never complained. They never questioned the things I asked them to do. So I'll remember just their fight. I'll re they always say, um, we have that dog mentality. I remember that. I'll remember how when everybody around the country didn't believe in us and count us out, we believed in each other, and we, we did that. Um, we celebrated each other. We fought, and we made it to the championship game when we're not the best team in the country. We're not the deepest team. We're not the tallest team. We're not the best team. But we fought and we played some good defense. I think we played some of the best defense in the country. Um, and so that's just want and that's heart. Um, but that's something you can control. So just proud of this team and our resiliency, our mental toughness, our want to win, and this the, the way they fought for me. Um, they never had a doubt. They look me in the eyes and fight. And, and um, you know, I, I, just, I love them. I wouldn't ask for anything. I wouldn't change anybody. I wouldn't get bigger. I wouldn't change my players. Don't care if we can't shoot here. Don't care if we can't post up there. I don't care because we fight, and that's all I can ask. The next question will come from Jamal. Jamal, go ahead. Uh, Jamal Murphy, the undefeated. Uh, coach, congratulations on a great Thank tournament, you. a great season. Thank you. Um, you know, obviously, Arizona has made its mark on the court, but you also, you also made your mark as a coach and as an individual. 
Um, you were outspoken about some very important issues. I, I was wondering, you know, did it take time for you to, de to develop your voice in that way? Have you always been like that? No, or, I... Know, why did you speak out? Uh, I, just because I'm me, it's like... And, um, sometimes I'm a little too transparent. I think we kind of saw that the other day on the court, but I do what I feel for my team, and I, that's all I care about. Um, don't care about the other stuff. I, I don't know. I just, if I'm passionate about something and I believe it, I'm going to talk about it. Um, I just, um, I don't know. It's just who I am. And sometimes it's, you know, your biggest strength is sometimes your biggest weakness. But there's some things, I, I represent a lot of things today. You know, um, I look back at my journey with this team. I had a baby right when season started and took like a week off. Um, it says I took a month off, but I did not. Um, like I was on Zoom calls four days after having a C-section. So um, it was hard, but my teammate, my team loved on me and they, uh, I missed a couple weeks. I got a little sick and they fought for me. I came back, uh, they were patient. Um, you know, I just, um, I'm happy. So I represented moms. Um, I have a baby here and here crying ready to feed. Um, I represent moms. You can be coached. You can be at an elite level. You can do it. You just have to have a village like I do. I represent black females. Don't get here too often and don't get opportunities. Um, but, you know, we ha I had an opportunity today on the biggest stage and represented a lot. I've coached against one of the best teams in the, once one of the best coaches in the world, um, who unfortunately I have to coach against during the Pac-12 all the time, but also who mentors me and who I can call for advice, like who cares about my, me and women's basketball, that's Coach Tara Vanderveer. But represent a lot of things. I want women to be successful as coaches. There was two women coaching on the biggest stage today, myself and Tara, and I think that's also meaningful for women's basketball. But there was a lot of um, hats to, to fill. Um, but former players need to get into coaching. We need development for coaching um, at other levels, and we need to develop like, future coaches and former players because it says a lot when a player has been where these players want to go. You can't teach that. That's why Don Staley has so much success. I mean, who wouldn't want to play for the Olympic head coach and who was one of the best point guards ever? Who wouldn't want to go play there? You know, who doesn't want to go play for a, um, you know, a, a pioneer, a trailblazer in women's basketball, Tarvin, Hall of Famer, the most winningest coach. So um, we have phenomenal women. They represent so much. So, um, you know, our, it's just the beginning for Arizona. I'm young. I have a lot of coaching ahead of me. You know, Tara's won like 1,000, 1,100 more games than me. So I have a long way to go. She's been here many times. Her team's more experienced in these settings. But I'm just proud of what we did, what I was able to represent. And I can tell you all those things, representing mom, former player, you know, um, uh, a woman of color. It's just these things made me um, coach a little harder and wanted a little bit more just because I received so much love from everybody. And so many texts. I think all of my former WNBA friends, everybody texted me. Um, and they were rooting for me, so I wanted it bad for so many reasons. And I wasn't able to get it done. I'm sad. But, um, but you know. We're going to squeeze in one final question from Michelle. Michelle, go ahead. Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. It's a hell of a run, Dia. Let me ask you about Tara really okay. quick. 29 years between titles, the <laughs> longest gap between titles in Division I collegiate sports history. Mm -hmm. What kind of perseverance, resilience does it take to run a program to a lot of Final Fours, to a lot of conference championships, and then after almost three decades win another title? Uh, I mean, it means so much. The fact that I, th I think nowadays, if you look at coaching, like to even have the opportunity to coach that long, at one place means you're so successful. I mean, to be at the same school for so many years and have like sustained success, it just shows what a phenomenal coach she is. And so much time in between, the fact that she's still coaching at this level and having so so much success, it speaks volumes to her and who she is and, and what she does. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm very happy for Tara. I think um, she's amazing. Um, she's helped me since I became the coach at Arizona. She's believed in me and she's given me advice. She's given me constructive criticism. Uh, she's always cheering for me. She always says she cheers for me except for one time in the year when we play each other. But um, it means a lot. Like she's one of the best there is. And um, I, I you know I think that she's, unfortunately for us, she's gonna be coaching a lot longer. I don't think she's gonna hang it up yet because she just has a phenomenal class coming in next year along with Gino and some of 
the incredible in Dawn. Um, they have amazing classes coming in next year, so they'll be back here, I'm sure. But yeah, it means a lot. It's been so many years in between, and for her to be so successful, it just shows um, what a great coach she is. And so, um, you know, like I think for me as a young coach to be able to coach against her in our conference, it makes me better. I think to be the best, you got to play against the best and coach against the best. And um, I get to do that against a lot of great coaches in our conference. So I'm happy for Stanford. They're a phenomenal team. It was really hard for us to do certain, some some things that we normally do. Um, but she's got a great team, and um, they're going to be good for a lot longer. Coach, thank you for your time this evening. Congratulations on a great season. Look forward to seeing you here next year. Thank you. And, and go enjoy your family. Thanks. Thank you all for joining us this evening. This ends our press conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thank you for joining us and have a happy Easter.